Hey guys, I am Amit Kumar and welcome to this video in which we are going to talk about inheritance. Now inheritance is a mechanism in which one class acquires all the properties and behaviors of another class. A class that inherits the other class is known as subclass and a class that has been inherited by a subclass is known as superclass. We can also call them as child class and parent class. Extends keyword is used by the subclass to inherit the superclass. Only public and protected members are inherited from superclass to subclass. Constructors are not inherited and this is one point to be taken care of. Hence, they are to be called from the subclass constructor in the case of the parameterized constructor of the superclass. So even being a public method, constructors are not inherited and there are some special situations where this can create an issue. So in today's video, in the practical session, we will see how we are going to deal those situations. Now there are few points to be taken care of. New protected methods cannot be defined in non-virtual classes. If you try to define a protected method in a non-virtual class, Definitely that would be treated as an error. Non-virtual and non-abstract types cannot be extended. So if you try to inherit a class, make sure that it is an abstract class or it is a virtual class. If you try to inherit a non-virtual or a non-abstract class, then definitely that would also be an error. Now inheritance is a very useful concept of object oriented programming and it is used to enhance the existing capability of a class without making any change in an existing class. Now we will see that in our practical example as well. So it's pretty much of talk and now it's time to see the things practically. So guys here we are in our developer console and now let's create a class which we are going to inherit. So guys you can see I have created a class known as parent class and I have made it virtual class and inside this class I have created a private protected and public data member. A constructor is there with some parameters. There is a private method and there is a public method as well. Now, if I create this class as a non-virtual class, what issue can be there? That is also something which I'm going to discuss. But before I move on, let me remove these parameters and let me make this constructor as a non-parameterized constructor. So now this constructor is blank. It is not accepting any parameter and let me assign values hard coded over here. So now you can see this constructor is non-parameterized and assigning hard-coded values to these data members. This class is virtual. Now what will happen if I will move this class from a virtual to a non-virtual class? So right now you won't find any error over here but let's create a protected method. So let's create a protected method. Now guys you can see it is showing me an error. And here you can see the problem new protected methods cannot be defined in non-virtual class. So if you are having a non-virtual class you cannot have a protected method. Definitely you can have a protected data member but you cannot have a protected method in a non-virtual class. This is one of the issue that we can face. Now let me just move back to the previous scenario where we were actually. So now this parent class is virtual. Now another important reason why I made it virtual is for inheritance. So for that let me create another class where I am going to inherit this parent class. So guys here is our child class where I have inherited the parent class and you can clearly see I have to use this extends keyword to inherit a class. So I have inherited my parent class inside this child class. Now let's see what will happen if the parent class would not be virtual. Now I have removed the virtual keyword from the parent class and I have just given a space and try to save this class again. See what issue you will face. It is showing that non-virtual and non-abstract type cannot be extended. That means if you are having a parent class which is non-virtual or non-abstract you cannot inherit it. So that is another reason why we need to make this class as virtual. So I am making this virtual class and now I am inheriting it and saving it again and now the error will be removed. Now clearly I have created a child class which is inheriting a parent class. Now how to check what are the various things that have been inherited from parent to child. 
very simple let's create an object of this child class and let's try to access those things so now you can see i have created a class inheritance and inside this class th there is a public static uh, void run method where i have created object of child class now if you remember a b and c were the data members of parent class but now let's see whether i can access a b and c over here along with that i will also try to access text whether i can access this text or not so let's do that let's try to access text with it and uh, let's give a value to this text and let's try to save it and let me just remove these comments as well now you can see there are few errors the first error that i got is uh, okay now you can see all the errors there are four errors the errors are with if you remember the errors are with private and protected data members so i am trying to access private and protected data members outside the class that's why it is showing error now uh, let's talk about the error it is saying variable is not visible parent class a variable is not visible parent class b variable is not visible child class text and the reason for that is all of them are private or protected so let me just comment it out and save now uh, there is one more error which is related to show one method and show one method is also private so let me just comment this one as well now you might be wondering i told you that protected members are inheritable so it's obvious that these are private and definitely it, it is not inheritable but why it is showing error to the protected because we are checking the access whether we can access it outside the class let's try to access it here inside the class so let's try to provide some values to them like a is equals to 100 b is equals to 200 and let's also try to call the show method the show method is here show one method so let's try to call that okay and let's try to save this child class now let's see the errors if it is there so there are only two errors that is related to the private methods so even though they are private they can't be accessed inside the class because they are not inherited now this proves that private members cannot be inherited so these two cannot be used over here but b can be used inside the class because though it is protected it can be used inside the class and it is inheritable as well so private members though it can be used inside a class but it can't be inherited hence we can't use these private members of the parent class inside child class but we can use the protected member of parent class inside the child class because protected members are inheritable now definitely we have seen this we have seen how inheritance take place and how an object of a child class can access the members of parent and child class both now the next thing over here is to take care about the constructor now here right now the parent class constructor is non-parameterized and there is no problem there is no issue we are facing over here but i told you if the parent class is not having a non-parameterized constructor then there can be an issue let's try to create that scenario now you can see i have created three parameters over here i am assigning values to a b and c with these parameters passed to the constructor now it is completely fine and this parent class is done this parent class is saved now let's come to the child class let's make any change and let's try to save it so you can see an error there is no default constructor available in super type the thing is because there is no default constructor and why there is no default constructor if you remember in our previous video i told you that once you make a parameterized constructor in a class you will lose the default constructor so because there is no default constructor inside this class definitely we are unable to call the default constructor and hence it is showing an error now how to resolve such situation how you are going to resolve this situation it is very simple there is a keyword which you can use to resolve this situation the keyword is super so what you need to do inside the child class constructor the first statement you should provide is the super and you should provide values to the parameterized constructor of the parent class so we need to provide three integer values so we can pass three integer values from here and make sure this super statement should be the first statement inside the child class constructor and now the error is gone so what is happening 
Now when we are calling the child class constructor while creating an object of child class, it will come to the child class constructor and because of this statement, the parent class parameterized constructor will be called with these values and definitely there won't be any error. Even you can pass these values. So let me show you another version of this code. Now you can see what I have done is I have created a child class constructor with parameter. Three of the parameters are there which we will pass to the super class by super keyword. The fourth parameter I am going to use here to assign the child class data member. So this is the way we handle such situations. Definitely now when I'm creating an object of child class, I need to pass these values. So let me pass it over here. So these are the things that you should take care while working with parent child class about the access specifiers. And of course, when there is a parameterized constructor in the parent class, how you are going to call it. Now let's see how we are going to implement the concept of inheritance with our student class. I hope guys you remember our previous student class. So here I have created a student four class and I made it virtual. And because I made it virtual, I made it possible for any class to inherit this specific class. Now most of the things are same like the data members, the constructor, the methods, everything is almost same. Now let's suppose in future I want to provide new functionality to my student class. Now there is there are two ways to do that. We can come to this student class and we can define new things over here and definitely this student class would be able to deal with the new things. But let's suppose I don't want to make any change in my already created class or if I'm not able to make any change in my already created class, I want to keep it as such or I have to keep it as such, but still I want to provide new functionality. So what we can do is we can create a new class. We can inherit the old class. So whatsoever defined in the old class will be there and definitely I can provide the new functionality. Now let me create a new class for this named as new student. So guys here is, you can see I have created a new student class which is inheriting our student four class. So everything that is defined over here is available. Now what I'm doing here inside this, because if you remember in the student four, there is a parameterized constructor. So because I'm inheriting that class, I'm creating a new student constructor where I'm accepting the parameters. Now this new student class is having the capability of issuing books. So we can issue books to students as well. So I've created a data member as string uh, named as issued book name. And I'm accepting four parameters. I'm accepting admission number name marks along with the book name. With the help of this super keyword, I'm providing this admission number name and marks to the super class or to the parent class, which is nothing but student four. And this book name I'm assigning to the child class data member. Here I've created a show detail method. Now this show detail method will call the show result method. Now this show result method will be inherited from the student four to this new student where I'm showing the result. Along with that, I'm also showing the issued book. So let's try to implement this new student class. Now guys, you can see I have created a new student program where I created an object of new student where I'm passing the values as I was passing earlier. And this time all I'm also passing a book name. And I'm calling the show detail method only. Now the show detail method will call the show result first and then it will show the name of the book as well. So let me just run this program. So all that I need to do is to call the show method or I should say the run method of the new student program class and click on execute. And now you can see it is printing the result. It is printing the result as it was printing earlier, but this time it is also printing the issued book. So guys, that marks the end of this video. See you soon in the next video. Till then, thank you and take care.